I do want to address the right away one of the most contentious issues and what we promised in our title. The first issue is who can claim to be the creator of AI generated content? Can a machine be a creator? So Professor Morris, can you shed some light on the legal perspective? I know, for example, the US Copyright Office and the Patent Office have issued pretty clear stances requiring that an author must be human. Can you fill us in on some of the basics of copyright law, like authorship and ownership, and share with us some more details about these filings? Yes, happy to. Um, as you mentioned, the recent rulings from the US um, courts and the USPTO and the US Copyright Office have made it clear that for AI generated or AI assisted inventions or creations, you must have a human identified as the creator. The copyright law um, has been clear on this issue probably for a really long time. Um, copyright and patent law find, find their foundations from the US Constitution. Um, specifically, we see in uh, clause US um, section one, clause eight, that the protection of intellectual property as it relates to copyright and patent law was set up in our constitution that Congress shall have the power to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. The key uh, term or terms in that clause are who is an author and who is an inventor. And when it comes to AI assisted or AI generated innovation, that's the critical question. And what we see at least with copyright, um, recently the US Copyright Office denied a request for reconsideration on a refusal to register an artwork created by AI. More importantly, the application, the applicant noted that the artwork was created autonomously by the computer algorithm running on a machine. So there was never an assertion that there was a human author or creator involved with that work. And that's the critical point in terms of thinking about AI generated, AI assisted, inventions and creations. Currently the stands in the US is if you don't have a human in the loop, as they say in AI, the government's not gonna grant you an exclusive monopoly right to that innovation. Mm -hmm. So for copyright work, it seems that that's kind of a closed case, right? You would have to identify who the maybe software um, algorithm computer scientist was in order for you to further identify a human in the loop for an artistic creation. We do allow copyright protection for algorithms. However, there's a limitation on the algorithm protection in the sense that the Copyright Office and the Copyright Act will grant you a copyright for an expression, but not for the idea itself. And if there's too much functionality in your algorithm and the expression itself cannot be retained or identified, you will not get a copyright. So you have seen lately um, in the Google v. Oracle case where the APIs were found to the, the question on copyrightability of APIs was actually punted by the Supreme Court, but the work that Google was doing using the Oracle API was found to be fair use under the exception for copyright protection. So most legal scholars have taken that as a sign that yeah, you can file a copyright for your algorithm, but it's more than likely that anyone using parts of that algorithm can make a fair use argument that they can still um, take parts of your copyrighted work and use it for some new creation. So the law is still a little fuzzy in terms of what is happening exactly with algorithms and copyright law, but for now, most, most legal scholars and, and most practitioners think that 
the case for copyright protection, but the algorithm has been weakened by the Google case. But as it relates to AI more specifically, you definitely will need to define a human as your author for your work for the Copyright Office to recognize it. And then similarly for inventions in the Patent Office, the law is pretty clear that in order for you to be an inventor, you, you also have to be a human. And the, um, the case that you have here on this slide with um, petitioner, I think it's uh, Thaler and the Davis system, which was an AI, um, solo AI invention, the office was clear in terms of the federal circuit ruled that there are no solo AI inventorship. Um, but what's not clear is what constitutes sufficient human contribution. Because as we know, with code and everything else written in, in AI, there's at some point down the chain, some human author involved at some point. But when you get into fully autonomous systems, right, that and those inventions is clear currently, at least with the legal rulings that we have, that you cannot claim those uh, AI fully autonomous inventions um, for patent protection. And I will just add that uh, there's Australia and UK courts are also um, ruling in the same fashion, saying that only humans can be inventors for protection, patent protection in Australia and patent protection in the UK. For those who aren't fully versed in patent law, jurisdictionally, it's country specific. So if you want patent rights in the US, you have to file for US patent protection in the US. If you want patent rights in Australia, you must file those applications in Australia and likewise in Japan and the UK and so on and so forth. Thank you, that was, that was really helpful. It might make sense for us to jump a little bit further ahead. I'd like to ask you, uh, Professor Morris and Professor Yu about approaching the singularity and fully autonomous. Um, if, if we truly achieve the ability for, um, for AI to generate content or to invent new things, will that with, truly with no human intervention, no prompts, will Professor Morris, do you think that would change how the Copyright Office feels and approaches these issues? Uh, no, <laughs> not unless um, not unless there's an act of Congress that really redefines who can be an author. So structurally, what we're dealing with is the question of how do you define an inventor and how do you find an how do you define an author? And the courts have been clear that that definition requires a human. Um, one of the nifty things, which is why I love patent attorneys, um, and I'm a patent attorney as well, you can have, and the US Patent Office has been granting patents for AI assisted or AI generated um, inventions. But the way you get around that is, you know, it's part of the process, right? It's not that we're claiming solo inventorship with the AI, we are actually claiming inventorship with the human who is at least auditing checking, verifying, working with the AI, and the AI component is only a part of the invention. Thank you. And Michael, can you, you confirm with us how it would work if someone, if a human were to try to register an AI-generated artwork for copyright protection? No, can they... I, I, I can confirm because it's, <laughs> like Professor Morris said, it's, it's a little bit of the wild, wild west, right? Um, so she's 100% right that if you claim um, ownership for the computer, for the, for the completely AI generated image, you're going to get dinged. The copyright office says you can't have a completely computer AI generated image and get copyright protection for it. Okay, so finally we have a solid answer on at least something. The question that moves us then into is how do you get protection? And then it's having what Professor Morris was talking about in terms of having an AI assisted image that's made. Okay, that gets us into a little bit more of the gray area in terms of what's the AI role versus what is the human's role. Um, 
Now, I think that's something that's going to have to be specifically stated on the copyright application form. The greater the role of the human being, the greater the role that the human being has in terms of the originality in creating the image and creating the authorship of the image, the greater likelihood and in, in all likelihood that you're going to have in terms of establishing and uh, being able to register your copyright. Um, some additional concerning elements in terms of drafting copyright applications and obtaining copyright registration is when you fill out a copyright registration, it's going to ask you, and I know we're going to get into a little, little bit more of derivative works, but it asks you, is there any underlying works on which this is based? And generative AI a lot of times is drawing from a lot of pre-existing art or a lot of pre-existing images or a lot of pre-existing material that are out there. And you start to get into the um, the difficult question of what is causing either um, what either is the uh, inspiration for the material or has material just been straight copied? Inspiration, okay, that's fine if it falls on along the inspiration side of the spectrum, but if it follows along the pure copying side of the spectrum without authorization, then you have potential infringement. Um, very much uh, along the lines of what Professor Morris was saying in terms of the idea expression that got me. Um, so that's going to be difficult if your AI software, your AI generating material does not log what's being copied and how it's being copied and whether it's just being used to draw um, some elements of inspiration or not. I think to the extent that there is a lot of dispute in the future in terms of AI generated images, a lot of them is a lot of it is going to boil down to that. What was copied? Um, how is it copied? Um, the extent to which it was copied. Um, and even companies have gone, companies who are, you know, image listers or image catalogers or image licensors um, have gone so far as to say, you know what, I'm just gonna get out of this game for the time being. We're just not gonna license AI generated images because it's too big of a liability. It's really interesting and really helpful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that.